Okay, cool. So now that we understand how to manipulate directories, now let's hop over and learn how to manipulate files or create files, remove files. And the first thing we need to understand is that all files on the Linux operating system are case sensitive, meaning that you can create files with the exact same name. The only difference is the case of a particular character within that file. And that will be recognized by the Linux operating system as a totally different file. And this is very different from the Windows operating system in Windows. A file, no matter where it is within the same directory, can't have the exact same name, no matter the case. So this is one of the big differences while working with files in Linux that you need to understand. And then also not to fully confuse you guys, but in the Linux operating system, everything is considered a file, even directories. They are considered a file by the Linux operating system. It's a special type of file, but it's considered a file nonetheless. Now, the first command I want to show you guys is the file command. It's very simple. So let's open up the man page for the file command and we can type man and then file and press enter and that will bring up the manual for the file command. So it says determines a file type. And then here is the synopsis and then also the description of what is that, how it's actually used. And then we can go down to the bottom and it will also show you some options that can be used with the actual file command. So let's quit and I'll show you guys some of the basic examples of using the file command. And before I type the command, I just wanted to explain that the Linux operating system does not use extensions to determine a file type. Now, there are applications that sit on top that will use the file type to show you what application can open the file. But as far as the file type, it's not determined by the operating system, if that makes sense. So this is another reason why the file command is very important, especially if you're working in the command line full time. Now let's go into our documents directory and look at some of the files using the file command. So boom, and then let's ls this directory. Uh, let's actually go into the Ansible examples directory and then let's run the ls command again and let's actually go into another directory right fast within here and what I'm basically looking for is a simple file that we can just play around with and look at the file type. So if we ls this directory, we should find something. Yes. And so what I'm gonna look at is the readme.md file. And the way you use the file command is simply just the command itself, which is file, and then the file that you want looked at by the file command. So let's press enter and that'll give us the information about this actual file. And as you can see, it's a text file. And that's basically what a MD, MD file is. It's basically marked down a markdown language, but it's, it's essentially a text file. And now, now let's run it against this uh, rolling update uh, dot yaml. So let's type file and then rolling update dot yaml and press enter. And let's see what it brings up as well. It brings up as a text file as well. And let's go up one directory because I want to find another file. So let's go to this Mon Mongo DB folder. And let's see what's in here as well. I think it's some images. So an image directory. And let's ls this directory now. Let's see what's in there. So let's look at, use the file command to actually look at one of these files. Now we already know by the extension what it is, but this is a handy tool to give you more information about a file. Now, as you can see, this is the file name. Then this is a PN, PNG image. And you can look at the resolution of the actual file as well as the color, color, the RGB, RGBA, and it says non interlaced, but that's an image file basically. So that should help you understand the file command. 
Now, the next command I wanted to show you is how to actually create files from the command line. So let's actually CD or change directory back to our home directory and clear the screen. And the command I wanted to show you guys is touch. So if we type man and then touch, this will give us the manual for the touch command. And basically what it says is it's a change file time step. But the major purpose for using a touch command is to create files. But you can also do other things like change access and modification times, as well as, you know, basically create empty files. So let's go down and quit that and show you guys how to use the touch command. And let's get back into our documents directory and use the touch command to create a couple of files. Now, the basic way to run the touch command is simply touch and then the file name. So we can name it file one dot txt, press enter. And if we ls the documents directory, we'll see that file one has been created. Now let's go on and create multiple files using the touch command. And basically all you have to do is list out the files. So let's create, we already have file one. Let's create file two dot txt and file three dot txt. And that's the two files. And I'm just basically showing you that you can create more than one file at a time using the touch command. You just have to separate them by a space. So let's press enter and then let's ls this directory again. And we'll see that all three of those files are there. And just like other commands, the touch command has, has a lot of options where you could change things about a particular file, but I won't go through that. I just wanted to show you the touch file and this is the simplest way to create empty files on your computer. Now that we learn how to create the files, let's go on and learn how to remove a file, which is very simple. It's similar to the remove directory command, but instead of R-M-D-I-R, it's just simply R-M. So let's go to the man page for that right fast. So we could type man and then R-M, press enter, and it says remove files or directories. And it basically covers how to actually use the command as well as the description, just like all the other ones, and as well as options that you can use. So let's quit that and actually do some examples of removing these files that we already created. So the basic way to remove a file is simply RM and then the file name, which is uh, the one, the file one.txt, which is the first one I wanna delete. So we can press enter and that'll delete that file. So if we run the ls command, we'll see that file one has been removed. Now, the same way with the touch command, you can specify multiple files. So all we have to do is type rm, and then what I wanna do is show you guys one of the options for the remove command, which is dash i, which is considered the interactive mode. And it's basically a way of running the command where it verifies that you want to delete these files. So let's uh, type in our file names. So file2.txt and file and file3.txt and press enter. And it'll go through and it'll make you verify each one of these files. And it says remove regular empty file. And you have to respond by typing yes and press enter and I'll delete that file. And then we have to type yes again, and I'll delete that file. So now let's run the ls command again, and both of those files have been successfully deleted from the file system. Now, don't you guys remember how I said there's more than one way to skin a cat within the Linux terminal? Well, you can also use the remove command to remove directories like it's stated within the man page. And I wanted to show you guys how to do that now uh, by using this test directory that's already there. And in order to remove that directory, all we have to do is type RM and let's try it without using any options. And let's type uh, test and press enter because I wanted to show you guys what the response is as far as the error that will pop up when you try to remove it without using any of the options. 
as you can see it says cannot remove test is a directory so in order to remove a directory you can use rm and then there's an option of recursive that's what the r stands for recursive and then force and this will force the remove command to remove that directory so let's press enter and that should remove that directory and we can ls this directory as you can see that test directory is gone now so i just wanted to throw that in there so you guys can see that there are multiple ways of doing things within the command line now let's go down and clear the screen again and the next thing I want to do is show you guys how to copy files. So the first thing I want to do is create a directory so we can go make dir and then let's create a directory called test under the documents directory and let's ls to make sure that directory was created. Now let's create a file within the test directory. So we can just cd to that directory. That's the simplest way and press enter. And then ls this directory as you can see nothing is in there so now we can use the touch command so touch and then file one dot txt and press enter that'll create that file within the directory and as you can see it's listed there once we run the ls command now let's say we want to copy that file within that same location well all we have to do is type the copy command which is cp now the first thing before i copy i want to show you guys the man page for it so man copy basically copy files and directories and then all the options that you can use with the command so let's go down and quit that and let's run the command and and do some examples so all we have to do is type cp and then you want to specify the file you want to copy and then you want to specify where you want it and the file name. So we want it in the same directory. So we don't have to type anything before the file name. We can name it file1cp.txt and press enter. And then if we ls this directory, we'll see that we have the copy file and the original file that we copied from. Now, let's say we wanted to copy one of these files to a specific directory within the file structure. All you have to do is type copy the CP command, and then let's copy that same file. So file1.txt, and we wanna copy it to a specific location. Let's copy it and put it within our documents directory. Now we could just type the absolute path. That way we know for sure we're getting the file in the correct location. So we could put the forward slash, which is our roots, and then the home directory, and then Josh. And then let's say we wanna put it in that documents directory like we stated. And that's all we pretty much have to do unless we wanna rename the file. And we'll just place it in that location by pressing enter. And if we ls this directory, you'll see that file one is still there, but we can ls a specific directory by typing a full path. So we can go forward slash home, Josh, and then documents and press enter. And that'll show us that file one that we put in that location. Now let's go up one directory. And the way you go up one directory, if I didn't show you guys this, but it's CD change directory dot dot and that'll take you up one directory as you can see we went up one directory in a tree and i believe i forgot to explain that when we covered the cd command i just wanted to keep it simple and not confuse people but that is the way you move up one directory while using the cd command now back to the copy command if we want to copy a directory it's a little bit different we have to use an option of dash or in order to copy that directory as well as all the files within it. So all we have to do is type CP dash or, and then we wanna copy that test directory, that test directory. And I wanna put it in the same location. So it's the exact same thing. All we have to do is type out a name. So let's go test and then cp that's the name of the directory and press enter and if we ls our documents directory we should see two folders in there now one of test and one of test cp which is the copy 
now let's ls that directory as well so let's go test cp because i wanted to show you guys that it does have those files in there that we created under test so that should be a clear example of how to actually use the cp command now let me clear the screen right fast because the next command i wanted to show you guys has two features involved with it and it's basically the move command you can move files and then you can also rename files and this is what a lot of people use the move command for for instance if you have a file named file one and you want it to be named file two within the same directory a lot of times people will use the move command to actually rename those files within the command line because it's basically a faster command it's just two letters in order to rename a file so before i show you the command let's go to the man page as normal and the move command let's press enter and as you can see in the man page it even says that you can rename files with it and it also goes through the description as well as all the options for using the command but i'm gonna show you guys the simplest ones if you want to get more advanced then definitely check out the man page but let's quit and then let's ls this documents directory again because i want to show you guys the simplest way to run the move command by renaming file1.txt and i'm going to do exactly that example that I said a few minutes ago. So let's just type move and then file name, uh, file1.txt, and we want to rename it to file2.txt. And we'll leave it in that same directory so we don't have to put the path in front of it. And we can press enter and then let's ls this directory. And we'll see that file1 is now file2. So that's in a simple example of using the move command to rename files and then you can also move the file through that process by specifying a absolute path which i'll show you guys now and so let's type move and then let's capture that file to file and we want to move it to the test directory and then let's also rename it to file three just to show you guys you can do all this in one command so let's press enter and that will move file two and if we ls this directory just to show you guys that it's gone now let's ls the test directory and press enter and that'll show us that we have that file three in there so basically we moved and renamed at the exact same time by using one command and you can also do the exact same thing for directories with the move command. So let's ls the documents directory again. And what I want to do now is rename the test CP to test PC. And I apologize. I typed the wrong command. <laughs> I put the remove command in there, which I meant to put MV. So apologize for that. But let's go down and move forward. But we're going to run that same command. I'm just going to change it to the right command. And I'm glad that didn't work <laughs> because it's a directory. I would have lost that file or directory. But anyway, let's run it now and we should be good to go. So let's ls this directory now and it should be test PC. So I apologize for that. And even your instructor makes mistakes. But let's keep rolling right on with it. And by showing you guys all these commands, you should be able to manip manipulate files within the Linux file system. So make sure you practice these commands because once you master these commands, then there are more commands and more options that you can use in the future.